What's up, nail friends? Today I have this circus-themed Dumbo set to share with you. I've already prepped, primed, and added a thin layer of clear over her nail beds, so let's just jump into it. I started with Glam & Glitz Ruby and used my number 10 Ugly Duckling brush and placed the colored acrylic away from the cuticle so that could be filled in with gold. And I didn't want the cuticle area to be bulky with the clear and then the red and then the gold, so that's why I left a space. On her thumb, I did the same technique, but I used Glam & Glitz Black Lace. This black has a tiny bit of shimmer in it, making it a bit easier to work with than solid black. I'm using the very tip of my brush to place the glitter in this empty space. And then I'm wiping my brush off to free it of any glitter, and then I went back over the area to make the line crisp. This glitter I just mixed myself using holographic glitters and a bunch of different glitters, uh, so I can't give you a brand, but if you wanted something comparable, I can add something into the description box that could be comparable to this gold. I decided to film from both angles for this video, so do you guys like the two angles or do you want just one, overhead or side? I kind of like both, but what do you guys think? Let me know. On a few of her nails, I'm doing a block sort of design. So for this finger, I'm starting with black lace and I'll be letting this completely dry before adding any other color. To make the line crisp, I'm just using my number 10 Ugly Duckling brush, but when it is dry, I'll go over it with a hand file and make it even more crisp. So I'm using Ruby all over this full nail, and as I've said before in past videos, Glam & Glitz is best worked with a bit wetter. As you can see here, it was almost too wet, but to fix that, you want to wipe off your brush really, really well, and then pat the acrylic to soak up the extra monomer, and then wipe it back off onto a paper towel, and it should be good to move around. The white I'm using here is Glam & Glitz Dove. This white has iridescent chunky glitters in it, which you can see here at the cuticle area isn't the best choice for this design. A fine shimmery white would have been better. I'm not a fan of this one. I also find it kind of difficult to move around and work with having those chunky glitters. I just don't think that this color really works that well with the glitters that are added in it. It might just be that it's too pigmented of a white and then the glitters are too thick. I don't know. I'm not a fan. As you can see, I really struggled to get that line nice and crisp. So thankfully, I'll be able to crisp up that white line with my hand file, but I just found it really hard to work with. Some better Glam & Glitz whites are Angel and Afterglow. Now that the colors are dry, I can apply the next color. So I'm just hand filing over this line to make it nice and crisp. Make sure you wipe off the dust. And then I'm applying the next color and doing the same thing. When applying glitter to a block design like this, where you'll need to be filing it sharp, I like to add a tiny bit of clear on top for strength, because if you try to file just the glitter, it will chip apart a little bit, making the line not crisp. Thank you. 
I'm doing another full red nail and these nails will have hand painted stripes on them in the end. For most of Glam and Glitz colors, they're best worked with wet, so you just want to test them out and see which ones do best with wet, because some of the colors work best with minimal pressure and a floating kind of technique where you lightly pull it down, and some of the colors work best if you pat it into place. So you just gotta play with them and test them out and see what's better. So this one seems to be okay being padded, but some of the other colors are better if I just lightly pull the color down with the tip of my brush. For this set, I'm just doing one hand-painted character, which is going to be on this finger because it takes for freaking ever. Anyways, I'm applying Ugly Duckling Foo Foo Pink all over this nail, and I'm not going to be capping this nail in clear acrylic because this is strong enough to just be on its own. I'm just applying a full plain black nail here. This is still black lace by Glam and Glitz, and this one will have gold crystals on it. Okay, so now I'm just going to be encapsulating all these nails. I accidentally got a tiny glitter there, so I'm just going to pick that out with the tip of my brush. If you guys ever do that, just push it up with the tip of your brush and it'll come out. So I'm just applying my clear acrylic. This is Envy brand and the monomer is Envy brand as well. And I will put everything in the description box what I'm using here. So I place the acrylic down and I pull with a very light, gentle pressure just to glide the acrylic along where I want it without making air bubbles or taking it all off. After I've been applying long, I just go back and pinch some of the nails that have dried a bit. So I'm just using my Ugly Duckling pinching tools here. I filed and buffed off camera. I've shown this a lot in past acrylic videos. Check out my acrylic nail tutorial playlist to see more videos with prep and finish filing. I'm using Magic Gel Universal White and the Selena Ryden Signature Series brush set to create these lines. I find this brush has the right amount of bristles to do perfect and even lines. Just fill your brush up with gel paint, make sure it's even and no big blots of gel are on it, and just do one full pulling motion down the nail. The brush is stiff enough that it basically does the work for you. I highly recommend this brush and I'll put it down in the description box where you can find it. I've actually always struggled to do lines and painted lines and I never let my clients pick that because it was so hard until I got this brush. So if you struggle with painted lines, then it's probably just the brush you're using because ever since I got this brush, I enjoy hand painting lines now. For the Swarovski Crystal Bling, I'm using Elite Brush on Resin, and the tool I'm using is the Ugly Duckling Blinger. Okay, now for my favorite part, Dumbo. I found a picture online of a photo of Dumbo that I wanted to copy on Pinterest. So if you're ever looking for a design you want to copy, just check Pinterest and you can find any kind of Disney character or anything up on there. So I found a little guy that I wanted to do, but I didn't like his ears, so I changed that myself. Basically, I like to draw the design out before applying, and this is just what works best for me. I have to draw and erase two or three times before getting the scale right, but once I get the scale right, I'm usually good to go. So just finish up hand painting with my pencil, and then I move on to the outline. Thank you. 
I'm using my Ugly Duckling Detailer 1 brush to apply the black gel polish. This is Ugly Duckling's black gel polish. I'm making sure to wipe my brush off and reapply the gel at every stroke that I make. This is really tedious, but it's totally worth it. I also apply super, super thin. I'm outlining him in whatever color the photo was, so his eyes are outlined in dark blue and his hat is outlined in like a mustard brown and so on. For the majority of his body, I'm using Jelly Fit Australia gel polishes. I usually hand paint in them. I find them to be highly pigmented and super easy to work with. So they're definitely my usually number one hand painting gel polish, but I also use Ugly Duckling sometimes too, because it's pretty comparable. For his body, I just apply a lot more on my brush. I add like a big bead of gel and then I just pull it through just to make it even and I spread it around and I don't worry about covering up much of the outline. I try not to but I don't really worry about it. I'm going to go back over that in the end. You guys have no idea how hard it is to do these voiceovers if you're not someone who does this. Uh, I can't even explain what I'm doing like 50% of the time. You should hear, I just basically am just swearing at myself like ah! Because it's just so hard to explain it and then to say it all correctly without spaces or ums or ugh, it's so hard. If you're someone who does voiceovers and makeup tutorials or nail tutorials, you, you feel me. You feel me. I'm also still getting over my cold, so please don't mind my horrible voice. While you guys watch me tediously paint the same color all over him, what would you want to see as I, the next Disney character I paint? Let me know in the comments section who you want to see next. For his hat, I mixed orange, yellow, and brown together to create the perfect shade that matched the photo I was copying. You guys can just do this with this brand. It's really great. It doesn't create like some sort of ugly, muddy color. It's perfect for that. So I just mix it till I get the right color. And uh, for the red here, I'm using Light Elegance Buttercream. This one is called Real Red. And I'm using the same yellow as the hat for his little thingy around his neck. And I'm using a light pink from Jellyfoot Australia for his mouth and his ears. And the white for his eyes, I'm using Ugly Duckling's white gel polish because I'm out of my Jellyfoot white. I mixed a few blues together to make the perfect blue for his iris. And then for the black of his eyeball, I'm using Ugly Duckling's Omni Tool, this one is just a double-sided dotting tool and I forgot to mention that during all this design I am flash curing a crap ton. Now I'm using Selena Ryden's signature series brush set and I'm using the one called Block to add shading and just using the darker colors I've mixed. I learned this technique a little bit from Priscilla from Home of Diva. If you haven't heard of her or you don't follow her, you're really missing out because she is the queen of hand painting. I will link her Instagram below. You guys have to take a look. You will not believe me if you don't see it. She is amazing. She also did Dumbo nails and she blew mine out of the water. So if you think mine's good, you just wait till you see hers. So basically I just keep adding shading darker colors and I added some black in with the red to make some shading on the red and I used a darker pink on the ears and stuff and you'll just want to keep adding shading. It really just makes your drawing stand out a lot better and make it look a little bit more realistic. 
And uh, you also want to add some highlights. So go over some of the yellow spots with a brighter yellow and go over some of the gray with a brighter gray and so on until you make it look as realistic as possible. And uh, this took me about an hour extra on top of the other set of the full set here. So this is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but I really enjoy doing it. I really like hand painting. I find it fun and relaxing and is someone's willing to sit there or willing to pay for it, then I'm willing to do it, you know? I really want to get your guys' input on the hand painting. Do you find it helpful? Do you like watching it? I've slowed this one down from my previous one because I was asked to do it a little bit slower so you could see it more clearly. So I just want to know your guys' thoughts. Uh, do you want to see just hand painting and not the full acrylic set? Like, Let me know down below what you want to see and I will change things up for you guys because I do this for you guys. So please let me know what you want to see down below. After I'm happy with all the shading and highlighting, I go back over him with my tiny detail brush and add his outline all over again, the same as before, basically doing black where the black is, brown where the brown is, and so on until you've got him completely outlined and make sure to wipe off your brush often and make sure that you don't have a lot of gel on it. You just want tiny smooth strokes and any mistakes you make you can wipe off with some alcohol and a brush. I usually use my block brush or an art brush from Ugly Duckling and you just want to make sure your lines are super thin. I'm just adding some black shading here where his hat meets his head where he would have shading naturally. Now I'm going over his eyelashes and outlining his eyes. I'm just trying to make sure they're really thin and here I'm going to show you how I clean that up with some alcohol and a brush. Make sure your brush is not loaded with alcohol or you could ruin some of the lines you've already done that you haven't cured. So just carefully clean up those lines with a pointy cleanup brush. So once I've added all my finishing touches and I think I'm happy with it, I'm just top coating him in matte top coat and I matte top coat the striped nails too and then I used a shiny top coat on the other ones and gave that a full cure. And here is the finished result of the Dumbo nails. These were done on my friend for her Halloween costume. She was a ring leader, I think it's called, where she dressed as a sexy ringleader and I wanted to do Dumbo because I really wanted to do it and I thought that this would be the perfect person to do it on because she's willing to sit for three hours. So I hope you guys like this set. Don't forget to comment down below what you want to see next and give me suggestions for what you like in a video. Don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Keep your nails long and your glitter strong.